Hi, so I wanted to make these quick tutorials about how to get started with Play Canvas um, as I feel like this will be a really good way to get into um, Play Canvas if you've missed some of the lessons that I've done previously. So once you're into your um, Play Canvas profile, there's a little button on the top right uh, that says new, click that to start a new project. You can select like a blank project and you can create without sort of adding a name or anything like that. It'll just be called blank project for now and you can change that later. So click the editor button to be brought into the editor. Um, I've got my screen really zoomed in so that the UI elements are really chunky um, and hopefully the scripting will be much easier to read and pass um, when we get to that section as well. It's not ideal to work with, but I think it's absolutely fine for what we're doing. So this is our scene and if I hit play, it will bring up a new window where I can't do I can not do anything. This block is not going to move, and the camera is not going to move. So we're going to change all that. Um, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this box because boxes are not great starting points for like character um, character controllers. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. Um, so you click uh, plus to sort of add an entity to your scene. Go down to three D, and then you go down to capsule. So capsules are really good. They're generally what games use as the third person or like first person character collision because it's got a nice rounded bottom so it'll like bump over rough terrain really smoothly and it's roughly the proportions of a like a, a human character um, and capsules are really easy to calculate because they're just spheres basically um, so if I hit play now nothing will happen at all it won't fall through the ground if I sort of raise it up it'll be much more obvious that nothing's happening. It's just not falling, so um, we need to fix all of this as well. So I'm gonna move it closer to the ground. Um, and if I click on this, the right-hand side of the screen, so this is called like the properties windows, it like fills out with all of the properties of this um, asset, and we're gonna add some components to this. So click the add component button, and go down to physics, and you want to add some collision to your um, capsule. So most, you would have expected um, the capsule to get capsule collision. It doesn't, it gets a box collision, which obviously doesn't fit super well. Um, and will mean that all of the terrain will sort of get caught on these sharp edges. So you can just go to the type of collision that we're using and change that to capsule and it will fit perfectly. Uh, the other thing that we need to add is go down to physics and we need to add a rigid body. Um, so we've got our rigid body um, right at the bottom, I believe. Yeah, here it is. And you'll notice this error that says ammo module cannot be found. You could click this button to import your ammo module. So ammo module is like a, a physics engine, which will uh, resolve all of the physics collisions and things like that, that we're gonna use to sort of um, move our character around the world without sort of clipping through walls. Or you can go to this cog in the top left and then go down to physics and you just say import ammo and that will solve that. It'll add this little ammo JavaScript folder here. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to understand it. But now uh, those errors have disappeared from the collision and the um, uh, the rigid body elements on the capsule. It still won't fall if I click play. It won't fall. So I need to go down to rigid body and I'll notice that the type of rigid body that I'm using is static which means it's not going to move. That's not that's not what we want at all. So I'm going to change this to dynamic. And then if I hit play, we fall through the ground. So progress, that's kind of good actually. That's the first time we've seen something move on the screen. Um, but we don't want it to fall through the ground. We want it to stay like um, bump up against the ground. And it's probably quite easy to see why this is happening because if I click on my ground, I've just got a renderer and some transforms. This is where it is in the world, and this is what you see. So it doesn't have the collision elements. If we go down to physics and add the collision, um, and if I go and if I also add, you also need to add rigid body. So I'll add that whilst we're at it as well. And you'll notice that the collision that it's added is again a box that is not sort of like uh, deformed. Uh, its transforms and its scales are not the same as uh, the renderable. So these half extents are kind of um, the bit that you want to manipulate. So 
I don't entirely know why they've called them half extents or why they've sort of like set it up this way, but the, the easy way to work it out is like the scale of this plane is eight by eight. So half of eight is four. So if I say four by four, then it's the same width and depth as the, the plane. And then I'm just gonna make it really shallow. I'm just gonna put like 0 0.01. So now it's really thin. Um, and that should mean that we land on the, the plane. So that's cool, we've got collision now. We're not falling through the floor, that's good. Um, but we can't move our character around at all. So the next thing that we need to do is make a, a character movement script, and then we can um, add that to our character as well. So in your content browser, this is where all of your assets will live. Just right click in here and you can add a new asset and you can add all these different types of things. We're gonna add a, a script. And we're going to call this script movement. Maybe I'll call it player movement. You can call it whatever you want. So it's, it's created a new script and I'm just going to dive into this. So there's a couple of syntax things that are good to learn. Anything with two forward slashes before it at the start of the line is sort of like a dark green. And these will be omitted when the script runs. So it's safe to get rid of all of these because they aren't actually like running any code whatsoever. But it is also quite good to sort of like recognize that as a syntax because you might want to say, oh, I don't know which bit. If you're not sure which bit of your code is like causing bugs, you can comment a section out. And if the uh, script runs fine, then you know that the error is within the commented out area. I also generally try to sort of keep my um, open and close brackets aligned because it makes it much easier to tell whether you've got like a missing bracket. If you've got too many open brackets, or like too, uh, too many like closed brackets, it can cause errors because the computer doesn't know how to sort of interpret your script. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, uh, you'll notice that you can start reading some of these lines, but basically player movement is this script, it's just taking the name of the script, and then dot prototype dot initialize. So initialize is the important part, that means it's gonna run when the game starts once. It's just gonna set up your um, assets, so you might use that to say, uh, choose a random color for my hat um, and give me a random scale and then if you've got five entities with this exact script on them they'll all look slightly different and that's what you'd use the initialize um, script for and then the update um, function will run every single frame so that's where we're going to be working because if we press a button we don't want it to only register if we press it on the first frame we want it to register every single time okay so um, the script that we're going to write um, is going to recognize that you're pressing a button and it's going to do something with that. So you want an if statement, which is like basically going to uh, translate to if the player is pressing this button, do this. So this is the first bit of it. You've got if and then you don't have to understand this stuff. You can just kind of follow along. But as you type the words, you'll notice that the dictionary and the library will fill out um, fill out potential sensible things that make sense. So you can just often say, if this dot app, and I'll just start writing keyboard, I just put K and it's filled out the whole thing and then you can press tab. And I use that a lot because it reduces the um, amount of errors that I get from spelling mistakes. So keyboard dot is pressed. So that's a function that says, is this thing being pressed on the keyboard? And it takes in one variable, which is like the key. So we're gonna look, you can look for keys on uh, gamepads. If I put game, uh, yeah, look, you can see gamepad there. I haven't got a gamepad connected, so I'm just gonna do PC dot, and then you just put key and it could be any key. Um, I'm gonna say key S, okay. Um, and then, so if this is true, then I want, an open and close bracket there and then something to happen. So I want to say this, because I'm going to put this script onto my player character, this.entity.rigidbody, because the rigid body is the thing that we're actually going to sort of apply the force to. Apply force. And then this takes in a vector three. And um, there's a bunch of ways that you can do this, but for now, a vector three is just sort of like how much force in X, how much force in Y, and how much force in Z. So I'm gonna say zero in X, 
zero in y, which is up and down, and ten. We'll just ballpark it and see what happens. Um, I can, and that's enough for now. So let's press Control S to save this script and go back to our project. So this isn't going to do anything yet because the script is not on the entity. So again, add entity script or add component rather script, and then we scroll right down to the bottom to find our script. So we've got a script slot and we need to add our script to it. So if I click on this add scripts part, all of the scripts that are in my content browser will show up here and I can add player movement. So now if I hit play and I press S, it moves. Um, so progress, still some errors. It fell over, which is um, kind of surprising to start with and then when you think about it a bit more that does make sense like if i had this exact shape it's kind of just like magical game physics that it doesn't fall over to start with because this is a perfectly um symmetrically uh, symmetrical shape if it had like a little bit more mass on one side it would fall over under gravity um but as soon as i push it it's going to fall over that's what would happen if you pushed it in real life so the way to fix that is you can go down to the rigid body and you've got these two fields here linear factor and angular factor so you can hover over these and I've just noticed that you've got like these um, tool tips scaling factor for angular movement of the body on each axis so I might say to fix it you can just like brute force say scale uh, the scaling factor for x y and z is zero which means that I'm going to take the angular velocity and times it by zero and that means that I can't rotate in any axis. And now when I press S, I don't fall over, which is kind of good. That's kind of what I want. So the last thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is you can see that we've got our S key and we've got um, uh, something happening when you press the S key. And you might want to just fill that out for the other three kind of cardinal directions. So WASD is sort of like keys that people often use for um, for movement in video games. So I'll just replace a couple of these. So we've got S, W, D, and A. And then I have to go through and work out. So the opposite of S, uh, which is 0, 0, 010, is 0, 0, minus 10. You can actually just go into the um, editor and you can work this out. So. Uh, when I press S, I want it to move this way. If I can grab that blue widget. And you can see that the if you look on the right hand side here at this widget, uh, you can see that when I move it in the direction of the blue arrow, the Z number gets larger. So that is why I'm adding a large Z number there. I'm saying move me in the direction of the um, X axis. And then if I click on it and move it the other direction, it goes to a negative negative value. So this would be minus 10. And then if I say when I press D, I want it to go in this direction. So that's positive in X. And then when I um, press A, I want it to go like that, which is negative in X. So I'll just control undo, control Z to undo to go back to there. So D is positive in X, which is this number here. and negative 10. So save that with control S and then go back and then we should be able to move our character around. Cool. And that'll do it for this quick tutorial. Um, and then we can elaborate on this concept in the next one. Thank you. Bye.